Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into the A320's DC electrical power generation, the batteries. From powering essential systems to providing emergency backup, the batteries are one of the most critical yet often overlooked components of the Airbus A320. The A320 has two main batteries located on the starboard side of the avionics bay near the avionics outflow duct. A venturi in the aircraft's skin draws air from around the batteries and vents it overboard. The airflow ventilates the batteries to keep them from overheating. Each battery weighs around 25 kilograms and has a capacity of 23 amp hours, meaning they can be run in flight on batteries only for approximately 30 minutes. Both batteries are continuously connected to the two hot buses. This is to allow for automatic APU fire extinguishing on the ground and for fly-by-wire controllability in flight if all AC electrical power is lost. Each battery has its own battery charge limiter, BCL, which monitors the battery charging and controls the opening and closing of the battery contactors. There is a cutoff logic that prevents the batteries from completely discharging when on the ground for long periods of time. The auto cutoff is commanded by the BCL and opens the battery contactors when the battery voltage is below approximately 22.5 volts. This protection is in place to allow a chance of starting the APU on the ground. However, this protection only exists on the ground when the battery push buttons are in auto with no other AC electrical supply connected to the aircraft. The contactors can be reset by switching the battery push buttons off then back to auto. Battery charging is normally controlled automatically by the BCLs. The batteries are connected to the DC BAT bus for charging when the battery voltage trends below 26.5 volts. The charging cycle ends when the charge current goes below 4 amps. When the batteries are sufficiently charged, the BCL disconnects them from the DC BAT bus. This charging cycle happens immediately on the ground, but only after 30 minutes in flight. The rolls can reverse, and the DC BAT bus can receive power from the batteries as a backup supply if there are no other power sources available. As part of the preliminary cockpit preparation checklist, the battery voltage levels are checked if the aircraft has not been electrically supplied for six hours or more. With the battery push buttons in their off setting, a check is made to see whether the voltage is above 25.5 volts. If so, then the batteries are simply turned to auto by pressing the push buttons. If the voltages are at or below 25.5 volts, then a charging cycle of approximately 20 minutes is required. In this case, the batteries are switched to the auto position and the external ground power is switched on. After 20 minutes has passed, the battery push buttons are then switched back to the off position to check whether they are above the 25.5 volt threshold. If they are, the batteries are switched back to auto and normal operations resume. The battery charging flows from the external ground power through to AC bus 1, then to DC bus 1, then onto DC bat bus before reaching the batteries. The batteries do not charge in the following scenarios. 1. When the emergency lighting switch is set to on. 2. When the emergency lighting has automatically illuminated due to aircraft electrical power failure. 3. When the no smoking switch is in the auto position and the landing gear is down. A further preliminary cockpit battery test is completed once an AC electrical power source is powering the aircraft, either external power or APU. This involves switching the batteries off then back to auto and checking on the electric SD page that after 10 seconds has passed, the battery current charge indication is less than 60 amps and is decreasing. If the charge of at least one battery is higher than 60 amps, then you must wait until the end of the battery charging cycle and perform this check again. When the battery push buttons are selected off, the BCL limiter stops operating. The battery line contactor opens. DC BAT bus is supplied. Hot buses remain supplied. 
the batteries are disconnected from the electrical supply most of the time in normal operations. However, the batteries are connected to the DC BAT bus in a few additional cases. One, for APU starting, when the APU master switch is selected on and the APU N% percent is less than 95%. This connection is limited, however, to three minutes when the emergency generator is running. Two, with the loss of AC bus one and two, when below 100 knots and the emergency generator is not electrically supplying the aircraft. In this case, battery one supplies the AC static inverter bus and when above 50 knots, the AC essential bus. Battery two supplies the DC essential bus. One of the key functions of the batteries is their ability to start the APU. In an emergency situation in flight where all AC power is lost, the aircraft will be flying on batteries only. Attempting to start the APU in this scenario will reduce their lifetime by approximately three to four minutes. With an estimated lifetime of 30 minutes on batteries only in flight, this should factor into your decision making on how many APU starts are attempted. An APU start is inhibited for the first 45 seconds after total loss of AC electrical power and also on the ground after switching the batteries to auto for the first time. On the electric SD page, there are battery voltage and charging current indications. When the voltage drops below 25 volts or is above 31 volts, the voltage indication turns amber. When the discharge current trends above 5 amps, the charging current indication turns amber. If both of these indications are amber at the same time, or there is an overall battery fault, the BAT indication at the top also turns amber. With a battery one or two fault, a fault light appears on the battery push button and is triggered due to an increase in the charging current at an abnormal rate. In this case, the battery contactor is automatically opened by the BCL, and a battery start of the APU is now not available, even if the remaining battery is fully serviceable. This is also true for a BCL1 or 2 fault. The A320 typically uses nickel cadmium batteries, which have been the workhorses of aviation for decades. These batteries are known for their reliability, as they can withstand the harsh conditions of flight from extreme temperatures to vibrations and durability, offering a long lifespan with proper maintenance. Additionally, they are high power, capable of delivering the short, powerful bursts needed for starting the APU. However, nickel cadmium batteries also have some drawbacks. They require regular maintenance checks and electrolyte replacements, and there are environmental concerns due to the toxicity of cadmium, necessitating special disposal procedures. Newer versions of the A320 family, such as the A320neo, sometimes employ advanced SAFT Skyzen batteries which require less frequent maintenance. Newer aircraft models are beginning to explore lithium ion and solid state battery technology. These technologies offer several advantages, including higher energy densities, resulting in lower weight and better fuel efficiency, lower maintenance requirements, and longer lifespans. Additionally, they are environmentally friendly as they do not contain toxic materials like cadmium. However, lithium-ion batteries also have limitations. They are currently more expensive than nickel-cadmium batteries, and they may not perform as well in extreme cold conditions due to temperature sensitivity. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial on the batteries.